I don't have my monitor with me today, so I uh, won't be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, thank you, Jesus. We want to welcome all of you. This is Pastor Richard, and Pastor Rebecca will be here shortly. She had a slight delay this morning in making it here for the, the service. Uh, picking people up and stuff like that there. So, But they will be here, and we wanted to be a little bit closer to on time. Uh, so thank you, Jesus. So let's start with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you because you're touching lives today. Lord God, that we are being transformed, as the Bible says, from faith to faith and from glory to glory, that we are going to allow your presence to grow in our life. We already have within us all of the power that heaven has to offer. The answer to every prayer resides within our spirit because, Jesus, you're there, and you are the embodiment. The Bible says that, that in you bodily dwells all the fullness of the Godhead, and we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. And we just ask that you're going to be with us today. We know you will, and that you're going to reach out and touch lives. God, many a time, a message will be spoken and preached, but because the Spirit of God is present there, he will touch people's lives in areas that are not being preached about because that's what God does. He's waiting for an opening for to come in, to touch our lives, change our lives. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We want to give a shout out to um, uh, Frank Miller and all of his crowd and uh, He's got some people that are watching, and we just thank the Lord for what he is doing in that place of residence. Hallelujah. But we do want to make a, uh, uh, an announcement, and that's what I am doing here right now. Uh, be right back. Hello. Not sure how you can see this, but I want you to see what we have here. Thank you, Lord. You can hear me, but you can't see me. Okay, Living Proof, Modesto, Mario Morello. And he's an evangelist who travels in a tent meetings all over, and sometimes in churches, but mostly in tents. And we just went to a pastor's luncheon conference, almost as it were, on Thursday this last week. 1,000 pastors showed up for this thing. And he preached two awesome messages. Hallelujah. But here is what is this is preparation for. Sunday night through Friday night, April 18 to 23. If you go on our uh, Facebook line, you'll see the advertisement in there. Hallelujah. And it's going to be in Modesto. And he is going to be having services. He has, I think it's a 1,000 seat tent and an evangelist friend of his in New York has one that's almost twice the size that they are shipping out here right now as we speak they're prepping for it to ship it out here so that they can have an expanded reach of numbers of people coming and we're seeing saved lives we are seeing healed lives we are seeing families brought back together we are seeing a tremendous revival in what they call the 99 corridor all the way down the 99 corridor towards L.A. They've already been in Fresno. They've been in Bakersfield. They've been in Marysville. They've been in uh, a lot of different areas, even in uh, Rockland here just recently, uh, well, within the last year. And we just want to encourage you. Look forward to the information. Start making preparations now. If you're living within reasonable driving distance or if you want to make a special trip out of it, it wouldn't hurt, actually, to start preparing hotel reservations now, if you can, because this is going to change lives. Just because it's not in your city and community does not mean that you and others can't be touched and, in turn, can be able to reach out and minister by this same anointing and power that Mario Morello has been exercising in the Spirit of God, because in him dwells the same Spirit that dwells within you. His name is Jesus Christ, and in him dwells all good things. Thank you, Lord. 
Now, there's a lot of people who want to tell you that there are different levels of faith. Well, let me just make sure we understand. You possess the faith, the same faith that Jesus did. How do I know that? <laughs> well, you didn't get his little finger. You got all of the embodiment of Jesus Christ dwelling within your spirit right now. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Jesus did not do one miracle on this earth as God. He left that in heaven. He came as a man filled with the same Holy Ghost you're filled with. The same spirit of life that he was filled with, you are filled yes. with. And everything he appropriated on this earth, he did it by faith and obedience to God. And you'll hear more about that later. Thank you, Lord. I think you noticed already that my wife is... is uh, uh, back and so praise God we're going to uh, go ahead and get on with the rest of the service in Jesus mighty name amen well welcome amen to the house of the Lord I always rehearse in my mind and my heart as I go and I pick up sister Mary for service amen hallelujah and the spirit of the Lord is so powerful so awesome and so wonderful amen and it's so easy when you have it's just you and you alone out there, isn't it? In your thoughts and your meditations before God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And I said, Lord, I'm just going to try to just relax and trust in you. How many of you know that we need to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ? I know as I walk with God, I know as I walk on this earth, I know that he's with me. How many of you know that the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, is with you? Just put your trust in him. And when the wind blows, when adversity comes. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When adversities come and the wind blows, what are we going to do? We're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus for he is high and lifted up. And his train fills the temple. I just want to welcome all of you that are here today. Brother Don, it's been a long time, and I can't even see you over some of these obstacles, but I know that you're there. Just like sometimes the clouds come out. The sun has been removed. Amen. We can't see the sunlight, but I want you to know the sun is up there. Don, are you there? Let me hear your glory cry. Are you there, brother? Can I hear you? Amen. He's, he's saying, can I hear you? Yes. Do you have a voice? Come on, saints of God. Do you have a voice? Let's lift it up and let's praise and give God the glory, the praise and the honor. Clap unto the Lord. Clap, he said. Rejoice. Shout. Amen. Let's stand in the presence of God and let's just, brother, I'm going to put you right on the spot, brother JR. Just open this service with the power and the presence of Almighty God. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's all stand and invite the Lord here. We welcome you. We welcome you. And everyone that is out there in Facebook land, YouTube, wherever you are online, we welcome you and you will feel the Holy Spirit. You're not going to leave this place the same. You're, when you open and you click on, you're not going to be able to turn it off. Just stay there and listen because God's got something for you. He's got something for me. Amen. For everyone that is here. Brother J.R. Amen. Bless us today. Help Thank us you, Lord. Holy Spirit. Overflow not just from us to everyone that glory, surrounds us. Glory, glory, Lord, glory. help us spread throughout this land far and wide, Lord. Mm -hmm. Let everyone just be filled with your presence, mm -hmm. Lord, and see the miracles that you want to send us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
Ancient 
Oh, 
Oh, yes. Who is answering that call? Who is responding to God? Will you say yes? Is there a laborer out there? Or do you say the word of God says there's just a few laborers, so uh, I'll just be one of the few. <laughs> no, God said there's called, chosen, and faithful. There's, there's a few that are called, chosen, and faithful. I want to be the one of the few that are obeying God. How about, about you? Yeah. When we have been commissioned to go ye into all the world, amen, and preach the gospel, take everything, take houses, lands, take it all, amen, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Let's sing that. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Jesus more and more so there's all kinds of verses to it 
and we do need to talk about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. More and more and more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what we need to do today is really, really, really call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. And let's talk about Jesus more and more and more. Amen. Hallelujah. And don't talk about pastors, preachers, friends, neighbors. Come on, other people. Pray for them. Pray for them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's talk about Jesus, the King of Kings and King, the Lord of the Lord Supreme. Pastor 
done from a gospel light house just uh, yesterday or the day before. It was talking to him because we met someone from a long time ago, a Pastor Bill, a man and his wife that Brother John saved many, many years that gave the word of the Lord and helped. What a testimony. Amen. And we met Brother Bill at this conference in Manteca. Amen. And with Brother Mario Marillo. Amen. And my husband went to Bible school with him and his brother. Praise God. Hallelujah. Small world, isn't it? Small world. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. At the cross. At the cross. Brother John was talking about going on his drive to go take trucks or vehicles or whatever for the for a, an auto dealership. And this old chorus came to him, he said, and he began to sing it. He didn't realize and he went one or two hours out of his way, but it didn't bother him a bit. Amen. Amen. Because of the fact that he was singing and praising and glorifying God. The presence of God came in his vehicle. How many of you want to sing and shout and praise Thank until you. the glory of the Lord comes down? Yes. You can be in your car. You can be in your shower. Hallelujah. You can be on a sofa. Amen. Or you can be on a lawn chair. Amen. It doesn't matter to God. Wherever you cry out to God and worship Him, He will answer. Amen. Alas, and did my Savior bleed? And did my sovereign?
day long. Amen. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together worthy. All together
I need to rise higher into a higher dimension of faith. Come on, folks. So I need the power of God at work. God working with me and upon me and through me. It's going to take my obedience. It's going to take my submission. It's going to take my time, amen, taking the time to praise the Lord, to worship Jesus, and to rebuke Satan and command evil and darkness and unbelief and doubt and fear has got to go. I've got to stand upon the word of the Lord. Jesus said all things are possible. Amen. Nothing is too difficult for you, God. You are able to do all things. You said you are my healer. You said you are my provider. And any kind of wind of adversity that would try to come, any kind of obstacle that would try to stand in my way, in the name of Jesus, any kind of flare-up, come on. Somebody just receive your miracle right now. Just stand up, you know. Lord, it is God. so much more difficult in this hour than it was in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and even before because there is so much, uh, uh, so much music, they call it music, noise, I'll just call it noise, rap stuff and all kinds of things, so much distractions that are, that are taking over the minds and the hearts of the people. When Satan said that he is going to take over the minds of the people, he's going to deceive them through their minds, through the things they listen to, the things they watch, what they do and where they go and what they touch. We need to have a pure heart and pure mind and pure hands. Amen? Before the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in righteousness. And it's his righteousness operating and working through us as we surrender, yield, and submit to God and his authority. Faith like a mustard seed. This is for me today. And I want to share it. That Jesus said that 
All things are possible in Mark 9, 23. I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there. Well, we're about to move from here to there. <laughs> we're about to move from earth to glory, earth to heaven. Come on, folks. But before then, there is a work to be done. And we must have faith in God. We must have trust in God. I want to go to a new dimension, a higher height, a higher level in Christ. I'm not better than anyone. I'm not rising up above people and mankind and such and so forth. I'm humbling myself. I'm falling on my face before God. Saying, God, I need you. My all dependency is upon you. Amen. I am committing to trust you more than I have ever trusted before. I am committing and dedicating my service to the King of Kings, the Lord of One Supreme. Let's talk about Jesus. Yes. Let's read the Word of God more and more and more and more. Amen. Because the Word of God is our foundation. It's a solid rock that we stand on. And I'm telling you, when the, the, the deceptions, the deceivers, and the lying spirits, the antichrist spirits, when, when truth is being attacked right now, the house of God is being attacked, the Word of God, truth is being attacked, there's no justice, it's fallen in the streets, it's trampled over out there in the streets, it's time for us to stand up for righteousness, truth, and justice Amen. in our homes, in our relationship with God Almighty, and get built up on a solid foundation of the word of God, the word of truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Call upon the name of Jesus and give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Just to have a small seed, the seed from the word of God. The seed from the word of God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, you may have something hidden from you and not even know it's there. You may have forgotten about something. When we came from the north, my husband got this Bible from the Bible bookstore that we owned. And uh, it, it's a new living translation. And it's a it's, uh, uh, large print. And my old one, I've wore it out through and through and through. Amen. And it's even got some ripped out pages and all kinds of different things torn and tears. You know, it's it's just kind of been worn. But I want you to know, my husband got me a, a new one two or three years ago. Here it is. I just found it yesterday. I just found it. It's brand new. Look at how even the pages, they glitter and gleam and they even stick together, right? <laughs> well, God led me to the first thing that I couldn't find for a long time in the Word of God. Deuteronomy 6 and 11. God has promised, God has promised us, amen, that we are going to go into a land and receive cities that, that, that we've never built. We're going to go into the land that, that is milk and honey. We're going into the promises of God. I believe that God is preparing his bride without spot without wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. We are preparing for the coming of the Lord. And it, it, it saddens me because it's so soon, it's so near that God is going to do. I tell you, in just a mega second, say mega second, just bam, blink your eyes in the wink, in the blink of an eye. God, his sudden ways are coming. The hand of God, the power of God, the hammer of God. Amen? Hallelujah. To you, if the hammer means the word of God, it's a sword, it's a sepulcher, amen, it's a scepter, amen. If that is powerful to you, it's wonderful to you, and you know it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and it divides the soul from the spirit. If the word of God is in you, and you love the word of God, and you, you read the word of God, you're happy when you know that God's word is, is about to come, and judgment is about to come. Amen? But first, amen, to the household of God, to the church, to the people, to get ready and be prepared. When the suddenlies of God visit us, and his hammer comes down, you know it's for you, child of God, that's obedient and walking in the will of God, it's exciting. Amen? You know it's going to catapult you into greater dimensions. Amen. More blessings, more of the glory, more of the power as we humble ourselves in prayer and fasting and reading of the word of God and witnessing and being bold like in the actions of the book of Acts 
the acts of the apostles. We are going to rise up, hallelujah, instead of being the mediocre, amen, the average. We're going to be letting and allowing the supernatural power and anointing of God flow through us, amen. We're going to be changed by the power of God. We're not going to speak any guile. We're not going to speak any negativity. We're going to rise up with the voice of God in us, fire in his eyes, in our eyes, amen, the sword of the word in our hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we're going to be soul winners, amen, hallelujah. And so what happens is when the hammer comes down to the world, it's judgment, amen. But what's the opposite to us? It's not going to be judgment to us, child of God. It's going to be blessings, glory, and honor to our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. Hosannas to Him. It's going to be the opposite when those that have repented, repented, and come clean with God for every evil thought, for every sexual, sensual, negative, ugly, dark thought. Amen. Every pornography. Every naked thing that you've said before you. Every evil curse and word that you have spoken. It is time for your minds to be cleansed by the power and the anointing of the Christ, the Son of the living God. Be purified. All you have to do is let the righteousness of God rise up within you by submitting, surrendering, and yielding to the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost because the uncleanliness, the stench in God's nostrils is about to be blown out. Hallelujah. For the hammer of God, the hand of God is coming down upon nations. Hallelujah. And to us, it's going to be the anointing, the glory, the power. Oh, it's going to be blessings, blessings, and glory, and honor. Because we're going to give up. All it takes is a heart to repent and turn to God. We must have faith in God. We must have just a small seed. The seed is the word of God. Put that seed to work. Amen. Water it, water it, water it. Let it grow. Let it flourish in the house of the Lord, in your mind, in your what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? What are your words? What's in your heart? Whatever your mouth is speaking. Come on. Whatever out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. It's time for you to quit gibbering, jabbering, clamorously speaking a bunch of silly junk and bunk. Amen. It's time for us to speak the word of the Lord. It's time for us to give glory to God and give praise and honor and lift up the name of Jesus and glorify the King. Lord of Lords, King of Kings, I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as a small mustard seed, don't depend on anybody else. Amen. You, in this last day, in this last time, you need to have faith. You can have faith no matter. It's not intelligence. It's not a brilliant mind. It's not how, it's not how big your family is. It's not how likable and lovable and popular you are in pleasing God, serving God in Him in spirit and in truth and righteousness and having faith to trust Him. Amen. You can say to the mountains, be thou be removed and go from here to there. Amen. That's what we're going to do. We're going there. So go find your mountain. Go find where it, there is. Find where there is. There comes to pass. There has come and exposed and revealed. Don't just talk about it. Get up and put legs on it and go forth and let God speak through you with faith as a grain of a mustard seed. And it would move and it shall move. Nothing would be impossible. Nothing. Nothing. What do you desire? What do you want? That's Matthew 17 and 20. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith which you can experience. Take the shield. Protect and guard your heart. It's a shield. You can extinguish, put out every flaming dart. I have been determined with this last thing that's happening right now to move from here to there. I want you to know I am doing everything. In the I am going to stay up. I'm going to stay encouraged. I'm going to stay blessed. And I'm going to speak faith. Amen. That God, nothing, nothing is impossible with God. And I know nobody knows. Just telling you uh, as to what my battle is. Sometimes I don't know your battles, but you're praying for me and I'm praying for you. And I'm standing in faith, believing and trusting in God. 
Amen. Maybe from here to there is I'm in the presence of God right now and I'm in faith. And when I get there, I'm still going to be in faith and my faith is going to be encouraged. Amen. When I see God answer prayers, when I see God do better, bigger, and more, and increase more in me, more power in me, more souls. Amen. Hallelujah. Just on our trip to, to, to Arizona, we baptized people in the lovely name of Jesus. We baptized them. Amen. Hallelujah. We led people to the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We prayed for people from Missouri all the way back home. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've come to, uh, not Mendota, but we went to Wasco. Wasco, but I'm talking about we went to Mario Murillo down to Manteca. Yeah. Just for one day, all day prayer service. That's all we've done. Worshiping God, praising God, and, and having faith in God. And our faith is being built. I'm telling you, it's time to get out and make some sacrifices. There's people that won't go across the street to, 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 to a Bible study. They won't get out of their house. They won't go here. There's so much fear. But I'm telling you, fear has got to be conquered by faith. A man having faith in God. In all the circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darkness. Ephesians 6, 16. Read the whole chapter of Ephesians 6 and you will be so blessed and encouraged. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11, 1. Hallelujah. What good is it if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Amen. No works. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and be well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, amen, by words, by deeds, by doing something, amen, moving, hallelujah, but someone will say, you have faith, I have and I see, I have deeds. I have works. Amen. Show me your faith without deeds, without your works, without your actions. And I will show you my faith by my deeds, by my works, by my actions. Amen. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers of the Lord Jesus Christ and sent them out another way? She protected them. She did the will of God. She had actions. She obeyed God. Fear was not upon her for her household and for her house and for her life. She watched out for the prophets of the Lord, the servants of the Lord. Amen. And God will watch out for you. I just spoke on James 2, 14 and 18. Hallelujah. Pastor Richard, I just felt that faith needs to be built up. Sister Kathy, we didn't sing. I practiced it and practiced it for you. Amen. She heard it before the service. Hallelujah. She heard it before service. Amen. Amen. We just have to obey God. Amen. Make room for the word of God. Pastor Richard, you're coming forward. I just love all of you people out there and here. Amen. And how many of you believe that we, the body of Christ, are going to increase? Amen. We, the body. God is going to give us a place. Amen. A wonderful place to worship and to, and to, to grow. To grow in Jesus' name. Pastor Richard, I love you, my hubby. My yes. friend, my best friend, my oh, prayer my warrior, goodness. amen, my buddy, 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 amen. hallelujah. Thank love you. you. Welcome, Kathy, and mm. welcome. I'm so glad you're back. And aren't you? Oh, you're yeah. you're so welcome. And Don. And Don, amen, Woo. and JR. Thank you, you love Lord. hearing him sing. It's about time you got back here singing. <laughs> amen. <laughs> hallelujah. It helps me and blesses me. How many of you are blessed Thank by Brother you. JR? Amen. 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 All of his amen. harmony and his bass Thank and you, Lord. tenor and... <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank praise you. God, praise God, praise God. Blessings. Now, Blessings. for the hundreds, and I mean literally hundreds of people um, that live within driving distance of Auburn, we want to invite you to start calling us, get our address. We would love, if you don't have a church to go to, we want to invite you to come. Call us, we'll give you the address and uh, stuff like that. Everything that you would need. And it starts at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. Now, uh, and many of the churches are open. Many of the churches are open without restriction. And they give people the option, if they want to wear a mask, they can wear a mask. If you're sick, stay home. But 
etc. there. But I want you to know this, okay? The house of God is where those that are sick need to be to have their hands laid on them. If it is a contagious type of thing, COVID, a flu, or something like that there, we can come to you. We do not have any inhibitions in praying for people that are sick. We have seen numerous people. I want to use this as an example up in the north. There was a young lady named Maria. And she was, oh, I guess probably about 18 at the time. She Something happened to her and she wound up in a coma. And she was in a coma for three solid years. They had met her, backed her down to the big hospitals in Edmonton. And she was there in a coma for three years. They gave up on her and decided to send her back to Yellowknife so she could die in the presence of her family. I don't even know if they actually found out what was wrong with her. But she was in a coma for three solid years nonstop. And we, meaning not my wife, but my wife and uh, a co-worker lady, uh, was called to come and pray for her. And her mom and her sister were there at the hospital when they got there. And I, I, I'm sure they prayed, but what happened was they started singing gospel songs. And just kept singing and singing and singing and singing. Yep. Worshiping and you know, speaking after a while, lost. the mom says, I think you better stop. I think this might be hurting Maria. Well, she's in a coma. Hurting your ears. My wife, led by the Holy Spirit, says, why don't we ask Maria? She went up to her by her head. And she says, Maria, is this hurting you? And all of a sudden, Maria says, good. And then she started moving her head and her hands and her eyes opened. She had a tube in her throat. She just couldn't talk. And within a matter of days, they actually released her from the hospital. That is the miracle working power of God. I remember a woman named Frances. We were holding special revival services in, the, um, in a, a community called Fort providence and we went into the into the arena there we had rented it and we had about 90 people there there's only a population of 500 people that's a good chunk of a population 90 people shows up and there was one lady that i had to go pick up who had been paralyzed on half yes. of her body i think you heard me talk about this just recently and she had a stroke and she was paralyzed in half of her body and her tongue, she couldn't use it. She couldn't talk. Her face was drooped down. And her hand was no good. Her leg was no good. And I had to wheel her in on a wheelchair. And she sat in the front row. And as the evangelist that was speaking spoke, he stops yes. and he looked at her and says, What can Jesus do for you? Yeah. She said, Walk. Mm -hmm. That's right. And he said, Well, then in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. Yes. And she struggled, and with a little bit of help, she stood to her feet. Mm -hmm. And he says, now, in Jesus' name, walk. And she took that dead leg, and she threw it out in front of her. Now, we had men there to catch her, just in case, as you understand. But what she did was she threw that leg out there, and when she started to put pressure on that leg, she started to fall. And then all of a sudden, strength came to that leg, and... She stood at attention. And again, he said, in Jesus' name, walk. And she started walking back and forth. Back and forth. Hadn't done it in a few years. Back and forth. That's the miracle working power of God. Amen. But it didn't stop there. And this is part of what I want. hopefully I'm going to try to talk about. You hear me talk about 30, 60, 100 fold. What level of the spirit of God, of the anointing, of the blessings of God, of the healings of God do you want in your life? We can get God to remove a headache. But what happens when we have a, a flu or a cold or COVID? What are we going to do? Are we going to crash, crash, give in? Oh, that's too hard. Not too hard for God. Not for God. This woman went over and she sat down in a chair. Service went on. And of course, it was electrified. Service went on. By the end of the service, the muscles in her face had pulled up. And you couldn't see the droopiness. You've seen it before. The droopiness in her face. Muscles. She could talk normal. 
she had her hand that had been welded. You under, most of you understand when they weld the joints to keep them from hurting themselves. And this woman still had that hand. Service finished. We had a massive altar call. We had 75 people in a community of 500 that committed their lives to Jesus Christ. Yes. I, she walked out to my car yes. in her own strength. Got into the car, got out, and walked into her, the nursing home, the senior home that she was living in. The next morning, the nurses saw that God had done a mighty work. In fact, we started regularly, regular Saturday night Bible studies in that building. Okay? This woman was put on the parallel bars to start getting strength and tone in her muscle. You know, when your muscles haven't been used for a while, they lose a lot of tone, they call it. Well, they started putting her on these parallel bars. Yes. And she was looking at that hand and she was saying, in the name of Jesus. And her hand started moving like this. Literally, God broke the welds on those joints. And she was able to start moving her hand. And more, and more, and more. Until there was no problem. Yes. She could have settled for walking and been happy for the rest of her life. Mm -hmm. But she stood in faith. And as she sat there listening to the word of God, she started talking to God. Yes. And what happened? She moved up from 30 to 60 fold, as it were. Yes. Or anywhere in between. She started moving up the scale of walking in that anointing. And instead of just walking, she could talk. Now she's walking and talking. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't satisfied with just that. She started speaking to that hand. And it started moving. Yes. Now, these kind of testimonies, some people, they, oh, you tell me all these stories. Well, you know something? The Bible says in the book of Revelation that Satan was overcome by the word of our testimony Amen. and by the blood of blood Jesus. Of the Lamb. Amen. And we do not love our lives Amen. unto death, yes. which means I don't care what people say. Yes. I don't care what people are ridiculing me about. I am going to testify about the power of Almighty God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I went to Utah, and we did outdoor services. Some mighty miracles happened. We had one little seven-year-old girl, I believe it was, that was blind in one eye because when she was two years of age, her mom accidentally sprayed Easy Off Oven Cleaner in her eye. She got down there when her mom was spraying the oven, and it got in her eye, and it literally just creamed her eye. Just took all the color right out of it. And as we ministered to her and prayed, we put her our hand over her eye and she could read the Bible. And within a couple of days, she did our scripture reading for us. From that point on, we were there for a few weeks. Every service, she was there. You can understand why. And you know why? Because a lot of people, they get a miracle from God. They get a blessing from God. They get a provision from God. They say, thank you, Jesus. Bye. And then they wonder why it don't work. It's because they're not putting it in action. I remember Catherine Kuhlman, most of us do, but a lot of you young people might not, but she was a woman that was <laughs> mightily, mightily used of God. She said she was married to the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you what, she was one of those ones. I just heard somebody talking about it the other day and it just kind of reminded me. She took the hardest cases and put them at the front, right in front of the altar. She had a section in the front yep. for wheelchairs, a section for cancers, a section for this, and a section for that. She didn't want to build up to it. She started with the hardest. That's right. And at the end of the service, those people who came in in wheelchairs were walking out of there, pushing their wheelchair mm -hmm. out. Now you understand, some of those people didn't own those wheelchairs and they had to return them. Okay? But they also had a lot of crutches and a lot of things that were left there behind. Uh, one evangelist told, uh, it was told how he had a special room, it was called, like a trophy room, and it had it loaded full of wheelchairs and crutches and all kinds of memorabilia of people who had been miraculously <laughs> touched by God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, at the one of the last services we had, um, 
like I said, we were there for a number of weeks, so it was uh, right towards the last part. We were inside a hotel room on a Sunday. And there was a lady that came in who was in a wheelchair, and she was totally paralyzed from the neck down. She had every joint had been frozen, so she's like this. She couldn't do anything, couldn't talk, couldn't anything. And so what happened was, is that they did an operation on her spine and lost some of the spinal fluid. Well, you know, that's going to wreck you. You know what I mean? Okay, after 45 minutes of ministering the Word of God, we spoke to this lady and started ministering to her. After a few minutes, her hands started to move. That was exciting. Come on. That was exciting. Her hands started to move. They were welded. Her hands started to move. Praise God. But you know something? That's not enough. Thank you, Jesus, for that. But it's not enough. Her elbows started flexing. And then her arms started flexing. And then her neck started freeing up. And within another, oh, maybe a half hour, I don't know, time-wise, she stood up in Jesus' name. 30, 60, 100 fold. What do you want from God and how desperate are you? And it doesn't have to be just physical. It can be financial. How many people pray, say, Lord, I need a thousand bucks to pay a bill and $500 shows up. And they say, thank you, Jesus, I'm going to go out and spend it. I like what Rodney Howard Brown said. He says, if it's not enough to meet the need, it must be seed. God says, what are you going to do with it? God will move you into a greater realm of financial prosperity. And don't tell me that my blessings are only in heaven when I die. You want to know something? When you arrive in heaven, when you arrive home in glory, you're not going to need a financial yes. blessing. Simple as that. People said, oh, I just thank God when I get to heaven, I'm going to have authority over the devil. You're not going to need authority over the yes. devil. You know why? Because he won't be there. Right. Come on. <laughs> and the religion has gotten so dumb. So, you know, another preacher said, how dumb can you get and still breathe? That's what it comes down to. What are we going to do with life? 30, 60, 100 fold. In allowing my wife to yes. try to distract me back there. <laughs> that was very subtle, wasn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. But what I have to say here is, is that when somewhere along the line, we're going to have to understand where all of this comes down to. And why is it that we live below the standard that God would have for us? We have become complacent. What that yes. means is, that means we're lazy. Instead of God doing the work that he's one to do, and actually has already done, and he says, do it. Put it to work. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm moving over. i got to give you some word here. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to go the whole part because of time-wise, but you know me. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord. We're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Greetings oh, to Sister Lord, Lord. Mel. Welcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Melvin. Amen. Welcome. Okay. Hallelujah. Hello, Melvin. <laughs> Melvin. Hallelujah. Precious lady of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anyways, here's what the word says. Now, he already gave the story in the natural, talking about the sower and the seed. Okay? We're in the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew. All right? I'm going to just read part of it, and then I'm going to flip back and forth. Okay? He says in verse number 3, 13.3, he, he spoke many things unto the disciples. Now, you know how many people have taken this entire encounter that he's relaying to about the sower and the seed, and he said, they say, well, I heard that one instance, I've heard about that. Jesus, the word of God says that Jesus spoke many things, many things. And he was said, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. You know what that means? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to look over here now on verse number 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. 
When anyone hears the word of God of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. Amen. But listen here. We are sowers of the seed of the word of God. Often, often that seed goes into ears of people who, did, who were not who you were talking to. Your life is a testimony and a witness. And that seed of your testimony and witness can go into ears of people who do not hear. And it said that that seed, in verse number um, 4, he sowed seeds and some fell by the wayside. Yes. It didn't say he sowed them on that hard ground. It said they fell on there. How many of you have ever gone out and seen a farmer sit? sow seeds, and not all of them went into the target that he was putting them in, depending on how he's sowing them. Mm -hmm. Okay? What is your life condition? Are you one of those ones that only hears from the sideline, or are you going to be one that's going to be in a direct target of the Word of God for it to reach you? It says Satan comes and plucks them away, like birds of the air with a seed. Yes. Satan comes and and robs you, robs you of that seed, which means no seed, no harvest. I want you to say that for a minute. No, no seed, seed, no, no harvest. harvest. Just because somebody came along and dropped a seed on you, deliberately or not even knowing, and God starts to deal with you, if you do not take care of it, it's going to get snatched away. It says here, and I, how many people use this excuse? It says, Anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and understands it not, I just don't understand what that preacher's saying. Well, talk to God about it. I don't understand. Open your Bible. Hello. Mm -hmm. I know people quote scripture all the time, they think, and it's not really accurate. <laughs> they don't know the word of God. And it says here that that they do not understand it, then comes the wicked one, and he Amen. catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he that received seed by the wayside. It was almost, if I can use the expression, but in this particular case, it in God's eyes, it's not accidental, but in the world's eyes, he accidentally got a seed planted when he heard something. He saw something, mm -hmm. but it wasn't spoken to him, but he was there and received. I believe more people get born again by acting upon receiving a seed that wasn't in the natural aimed at them, but they received it because they saw, they heard. How many people have been flipping through the channels on TV and they come across a gospel thing and the preacher preaches something for just a moment? That's all it took. A seed was planted. You see what I'm saying? But you have to seek understanding. Understanding doesn't mean that you know everything about it, but you've got to have to take it further. Planting a seed is only the beginning of a harvest. Then he says here, and back over, chapter 13, verse number 5, some fell in stony places. Now, he just got through telling us that the hardened ground of the, of the wayside road that that seed fell on was actually... The person's heart. All right? Even the hardest road can be cracked. Even the hardest stone can be cracked. My wife and I were just talking about it. We were driving uh, through some areas there, and we see these big old giant boulders, and a tree had broken through the center of that boulder and split it in half. There's nothing too hard for our God. It's amazing. It just takes a little longer sometimes yes. because God's got to work out that, that stubbornness out of our life. Yeah. And he says here, Amen. some fell, verse 5, upon stony places that didn't have much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deep depthness of earth. Okay. Another example of it on our drive. How many times have you been driving down a country road and you see a tree, and it's still a tree that's not going straight up, but it's, it's at an angle? Yeah. The main trunk of the tree is at an angle. Mm -hmm. Okay? Why, why is that? Because it didn't have much earth to grab a hold to. 
and it started leaning and then uh, by God's providence or if you want to use that expression but but then what happens something hit okay they're, they're stuck. The then finally that root grows just enough yeah. to grab hold, but it's already this way. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. He says here, the explanation on that, yeah. verse number 20. But he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he, that he hears the word. In the Greek, he heard the word repeatedly. Repeatedly. Because not every seed is going to take root. You plant a seed, it may or may not do it. Sometimes I, I used to do that in my backyard when I was a kid. I'd plant seeds for something and nothing would happen. <laughs> nothing would happen. Did you water it? And it says, the same as he that heard continually the word and with joy he received it. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Oh, wow. Jesus I respond to your word and I accept you into my life. How many women have gotten pregnant? Okay. And then suddenly it says, yet he didn't have any root in himself, but he endures for a time. And then when troubles come, tribulation, persecution arises because of the word. By and by, he's offended. Okay, what happens is, they're not strong enough to be able to grow in the things of God. Now, I'm going to say it this way, by themselves. Say that, by themselves. I know people who think they know everything there is about the Bible. You know something? I don't care who they are walking on this earth. There's only one person that knows everything about that Bible, and his name is Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Nobody knows it all. Everybody walks in a certain amount of light, and they can lose that light. Right. They walk in a certain amount of anointing, but they can lose that anointing. Right. Now, that anointing dwells within them. That light dwells within them if Jesus is there. But they can literally turn off the light. That yep. If that lamp over there, two lights are shining right now. If I go over there and unplug it, there's nothing wrong with that lamp. There's nothing wrong with the electricity, but it hasn't connected. So you don't get the use of it the way... You think it is. So we throw it out and go buy a new one. Come on. We've all been there. All right? He says here, yet he didn't have root in himself. That's true. Just because you have received the word of God doesn't mean you have what is in you. Okay? What I'm saying is you and in your mind, in your spirit you do, but in your mind you may not have what it takes to take this battle, take this provision, take this blessing, and take it to the next level. Amen. That's where we're headed, is for the next level. next level. You have to understand, you cannot do it by yourself. No. No. There's too many Christians out there who say, oh, Jesus is just you and me. Mm -hmm. Until troubles come, and all of a sudden, it's like Jesus isn't there. Right. Okay? I want you to see this. I'm going to read on down in the last part because of time, but you can read that. Just read the whole chapter is good, but the first part and the last part, or the middle anyways, is the uh, the explanation of this. And it says, he says here, thank you Lord, verse 22, he also that receives seed among thorns Thorns. is he that hears, continually hears. Hearing does not yeah. mean having sound waves come through one ear and out the other. Some people act like it. All right. But it means, I didn't ask you to raise your hand. <laughs> okay. But what it means, what it means is responding. You hear it and respond. You hear it and respond. Yes. Half the time, because we're so big-headed or we're so sure of ourselves, we think we know it all, and all of a sudden we realize that the simplest word of God, we think, oh, I already know that, but God's got a greater message. Yes. But you have to respond to it. It means, technically, already having made up your mind to obey God no matter what he says, even if you don't understand. I find the greatest provisions and the greatest blessings come from God when we obey God without realizing what we have done. 
Simple as that. We have sown seed when God told us to sow seed financially. And guess what? We get blessed for it down the road. And you can see it's a direct connection, but we didn't know that at the time. We just obeyed God. Okay? We took a trip to Missouri. Yeah. We just obeyed God. Amen. Hallelujah. God not only provided before to go to Missouri. We started receiving checks in the mail, and we're sitting here saying, okay, wow, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. We deposited in the bank, and... and uh, we just, yeah, well, Lord, what do you want us to do? And then suddenly, so I think even the same day or the day before, we had received a phone call of an emergency. And the Lord spoke to her and spoke to me at separate places and said, you need to go. In two days, we were on our way, which wound up being almost a three-week trip to Missouri. And, to, and then we wound up in uh, Arizona twice ministering. And we got blessed, but God had provided ahead for it. Now, one of the errors that we have, we get a blessing from God financially. The first thing we think is, what am I going to do with it? Well, maybe you better hold on to it. Maybe you better ask God what I'm going to do with it. And, you know, the Bible says that he, and I'm not going to go into that right now. I believe it's the ninth chapter of Second Corinthians. I believe it is. And he says, he says that God gives seed to the sower. To provide for him food and also to be a blessing and to obey God with. God will provide for you. It's like a farmer. He goes out and the Bible, I was just reading it this morning. He says, don't you know that the husbandman, the farmer, farmer should partake of his own harvest. You see what I'm saying? But too many people, they don't do that. They only do it when they feel like it. Instead of following the word of God, you do it out of obedience first when you know you're supposed to. And then second of all, the other part is as God leads. But don't always eat your seed because God has given you a seed to plant and that plant will have a harvest. Some people, again, I mentioned, I said this I think a week or so ago, but it bears repeating. Some people are saying, well, you know, Praise God, I obey God, but I don't expect anything out of return. Bless his holy name. I get all of my rewards in heaven. Well, Jesus said in Matthew and in Mark, he said, no man leaves mother, father, brother, sister, home, and lands for the gospel of my sake. That is just talking about missionaries. It's talking about going to that extent by example. In other words, you're forsaking this life for Christ, that you shall not receive one hundredfold in this life. What does in this life mean? Before you die? Well, why don't I get it then? How come I haven't received it? You haven't called it in. The Bible says in Mark, he says, when you pray, believe now as you are praying, believe you receive and you shall have it. Yes. You go to the bank, you write a check, you walk up to the counter and hand them the check. They know who you are. You give them that. Or do you have to wait a week to get the money? Well, you might if it's a large number. You may have to bring it in. But you will know about it. You're not going to stand there for a week waiting for your money. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Don't tell me that there are rewards for our obedience here and now. Well, why don't I get what I need? Maybe you should start talking to God because maybe you're living under the 30-fold, the 60-fold, 100-fold. It might be, might not be enough only because God is testing you. God is putting you in a position of where are your priorities going to be. Are you going to eat your seed or are you going to say, well, maybe I'll fast today because i got to plant this seed. In the name of the Lord. Fasting we will be talking about soon. Thank you, Lord. Not today, though. So everybody say thank you, Jesus. Thank All right. Jesus. Hallelujah. It says here, he says, He also that received seed among the thorns is he that hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitful of riches and cho they choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. Thank you, Lord. Did you see that? What are the thorns? Your attitudes? Mm -hmm. Your ways of life? Mm -hmm. Your failure to obey God? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
And he says here, he says, when you start receiving seed from God. Now, I was just talking about it being preaching salvation, healing. You're hearing the word of God. You might hear the word of God in your spirit that says you need to be obeying me in this. You need to do this. You need to plant this. You need. How many, how many people want to harvest, but they don't want to plant the seed? Come on. Bible says in the book of Genesis that it's seed time and harvest. Hello, harvest. Where do you get the harvest from? Planting the seed? Little chicken. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And you have to have it deep in the ground. You have to, it's got to be grounded in the word of God. The written word, the spoken word, the obedience to that word, and the harvest will come in every area. And don't give me this, of, well, I'm okay. I got everything I need, so I don't need any blessings from God. God takes care of me. Well, God wants to do more than just take care of you. Yeah. The sentence says, My God, how many broken families started when the husband got a raise of work and started spending it all on himself, ignoring his family? Next thing you know, his family is not being taken care of because he's more concerned about himself. Mm. Or the wife is more concerned about her glamour. Pride, right? Of course, the men are just as bad. <laughs> oh, Lord help us. I won't get into that right now. But what I am saying is this. Is that they will choke. Everybody say choke. It chokes the word. <coughs> what happens to you? If I came over and gave you a, a good old squeeze on the throat, what would happen to you? You could cough. You could choke. You could die, Correct. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But it doesn't mean, I'm not talking about me being the devil. What I'm saying is, is that the devil will use your cares of riches. Yes. yes. Deceitfulness of riches doesn't just mean I'm following to get the money. Sometimes it's the humbleness that we try to express that, oh, I don't need anything, Jesus. Just you and me and I'm satisfied. Thank you, Lord. Lord said, well, but I want you to get a plane ticket, and I want you to go here to minister the word. Oh, I don't need no money, Jesus. And then what happens? We stop hearing God's call because we are not obeying him. He wants you to go. He will provide. Now, I know many a man of God, woman of God, that have gone to, as an example, Reese Howells would go to the train station, stand in line to to buy the ticket with no money whatsoever in his pocket. And when he got to the window and told the, the man behind there, Glory. I want to go here, and this is when I want to go, this is what train I want to go on, etc. And they tell him how much. Now, I'll tell you what, he was definitely praying. And as soon as it was time to him to hand the money, somebody walked over and said, Are you Reese House? Yeah. He said, well, somebody delivered this envelope by mistake to my address of service. Here. It's yours. He opens it up and the exact, exact amount of money he needed was in that envelope. Now, yes, praise God. But you know something? He was a man who sowed. You yes. ought to read that book. It's called Reese Howell's Intercessor. You can hear that book on face on uh, YouTube. It is awesome, the things that he has done. But what I am saying is, is that there is more to life in the spirit than people ever want to get. No matter how good you got it. My Bible says in the second chapter, 1 Corinthians, I hasn't seen. I want you to repeat this. Say, I hasn't seen. Ear hasn't heard. Ear hasn't heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God already has prepared for you. The things that God has already prepared for you. Okay, dinner's ready. Hello. Come and get it. You're hungry. Dinner's ready. But you got to come in and get it. Time to get it. Time to get it. Because I'll guarantee you one thing. It sits there too long. It's not going to be edible. That provision will go somewhere else. The Bible says, I understand this. I know I'm getting off course, but you, you know me. Okay, listen to this. There's a lot of people who don't recognize that God says that I have taken the riches, the blessings that God intended for you and has laid them up in the hands of the Gentiles waiting for you. Yes, yes. They're getting rich out there off your blessing. Because you were at the wrong train station. Because you did not obey God what he wanted. 
I was just reading it again in Scripture in Ephesians. He says he is able. Say that. He is he able. Is able. No, what part of able don't you understand? Except for Cain. <laughs> Cain stops the able. Cain is able. Cain. Hello? Cain. Mm -hmm. Cain stops the able. Cain. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was corny, I know. Okay. But what I'm saying is, he says he is able. To provide. Say, to provide. To provide. Exceedingly. Exceedingly. Abundantly. Abundantly. Above all. Above all. That I can think. That I can think. Or ask. Or ask. Now think of this. Amen. If he can, if, if he can do more than what you can think and ask, then why are we asking, oh, all I need, Lord, is this bill to be taken care of. Why is it that Come we on. can think Come on. big? Preach it, Pastor. Preach it. But we ask Amen. small. Come on. Come on. Come but on. when we are asking big and thinking big, he is able to exceedingly abundantly. That yep. means overflowing and then overflowing the overflowing. Yeah. Yeah. Exceedingly abundantly above all that you can think or ask. Now, why are we standing here? Peddling in little minor things when God has great things for every one of us. I don't care what your physical condition is. I don't care what your financial condition is. I don't care what any condition is. Our God is able to pull you out of it. Amen. And many Amen. times we use those conditions mm -hmm. to not obey God and convince ourselves we are. I'm going to use another example. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. All right. I, in Grass Valley. We had a, a friend of mine, Sam Zweig, an evangelist with a mighty anointing of healing in his life, uh, touching people's lives. And uh, we rented a, a, a hall, and we had a special Miracle Night rally there. And God was doing all kinds of things all over everywhere. And Sam looks at this lady that came in on her walker, and he says, what can Jesus do for you? She says, I want to walk. He says, well, then stand up. So she stood up with her walker. He walks over, takes her walker away from her. Why? He wants to remove what her dependency is on, except God. He took her by the hand, and he started walking backwards. And she started walking as strong and as well as anybody else. And eventually he took his hands off from her, and she kept walking and walking. And all of a sudden she walks back over to him and she says, I can't do this. And he looks at her. She says, I need my walker back. Right now. So they got the walker and gave it back to her. She walked back with her walker to her seat. At the end of the service, she was standing out by the back door. And people were leaving. My wife and I, we were closing up shop and everything else. And and uh, she called my wife over. Come here, I want to talk to you. She says, I know God was healing me. I felt strength in my legs like I had never had since I Come on. got this illness. Through. She says, I know God was healing me. She says, and then I started getting <laughs> flooded with these thoughts. Oh, my God. That means I'm going to lose my disability. I'm going to oh, work. I'm going to lose my disability. I'm going to have to go back to work. Oh my God, I can't do that. And she chose disability <laughs> and dependency upon being supernaturally free. Oh. True. Well, we've all been there. Come on. We've all been there. We've all done it in some form, some degree, somewhere. But when are we going to wake up and stop doing that and start moving up from the 0 to the 10, to the 20, to the 30, to the 50, to the 100 fold? And we're going to fluctuate back and forth because it's going to be in a different area in our life and we're going to have to pull through that. God is calling us right now to come up to a higher level because this day and age, I think we've already had a year of this COVID. That's enough. Too much. Yeah, too much. We're going to have to stand up in the power and the glory yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ and the provisions that he can give us. We need to put our dependency upon him. On the power of God. All right, I'm going to finish up here. Didn't I already say that? Oh, anyways. Okay, here's what it says. What does that mean? Verse 23. He that received, notice this, except for the wayside, Every single one of these received the seed. 
All right? And he, the, the one that received the seed into good ground, continually heard the word, responded to the word, and understood it. I know I missed one, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And understood it. Here is somebody who is grounded enough to understand. They take it far enough to get the understanding. Understanding doesn't mean I know how it works. Understanding is, first of all, understanding that comes from Jesus and Jesus alone. And that there are things that are blocking it. If I have weeds, if I have stones, I get those things out of my way so that the power of God can flow without limitation. I'm not talking about uh, uh, even the physical problems that we all have from time to time. I'm not, even though that happens, it isn't, well, I got to get healthy before I serve God. You know something? You got to serve God before you get healthy and you'll get healthy quicker, faster, and it'll stay so much longer and keep you. But you know something? We've gotten so used to it now. In whatever realm, every one of us are guilty. And he says that he heard it continually. He understood it which also bared fruit. Out of these four conditions of the heart, that's the only one that bared fruit. Mm -hmm. Now, we say, well, thank you, Jesus. I want to be one of that good ground people. Yes, I want to bear fruit. Good thank you, Jesus. That's good. Good ground. Good it says, and it brings forth some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Well, wait a minute, God. I thought you were no respect. You're a person. You don't love that person over there and provide them for them any more than you do for me. Then why are they flourishing and I'm not? Which fold are you in? Jesus told his disciple, a little corny side. Jesus told his disciple, I have sheep in other folds that you haven't seen yet. But see, there are so many of these folds Okay, what does a fold do? Now, in paper, it's, I was folding it there. In the natural side, a fold, you know, what they used to refer to like with sheep, mm -hmm. each okay. fold is a different thing, okay. a different different part. Okay, that was just a side one. But he brought forth some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirty. Mm -hmm. Where are you today? The Bible says that we are supposed to judge ourselves so that we can be judged of no man. We are to judge ourselves. And this is what we need to do. Thank you, Lord. Let's just have a word of prayer here for just a minute. I believe that God is speaking to our hearts. You know something? We ain't dumb, we ain't blind, we ain't stupid. That's what one person said to me. I ain't blind, I ain't dumb, and I ain't stupid. <laughs> well, guess what? You aren't either. Now, we need to judge ourselves. That's what the Bible says. We need to analyze ourselves. Where can I use help? God, what can I do to produce in the kingdom of God more than I am right now? What is holding me back? God, what, what level am I on when it comes to this? Finances, what level am I in? When it comes to health, what level am I functioning in? God, in my relationships, what am I functioning in? Where am I short? Where am I strong? And then all of a sudden, God, what do I do to get the stones out of my life? God, what do I got to do to get the thorns out of my life? Anybody ever have a splinter? I know you have. That thing... No matter how small, it can be the most irritating thing. It's almost yes. bad as a toothache. You know what I mean? It's splinter. And if you don't get it out of there, what does it do? It goes deeper. Festers. Yes. And then what happens? It takes pain. Yes. <laughs> it takes pain, not pond bread. It, it takes pain no, to get it out of your life. And you're going to have to put some pressure on it. And you may have to put some ointment on it. And you're going to have to do something in order to get that. But in between, it starts debilitating you. You suddenly start favoring that finger. You start all of a sudden working with your other hand more. And most of us that are not ambidextrous, that means 
we can use both hands to do something. We favor a right-hander. Well, you, if you take away his right hand, they're going to fumble a lot of things simply because they're, they're not used to using that hand. But God wants to use you in many areas. Thank you, Lord. Now, those of you that are online here, I want you to, first of all, understand our phone number is 530-537-4974. In the same manner, you understand when you hear the word of God, now you have a responsibility to respond to God. God's already responded to you even before you ask. I believe it's in uh, Third John. The Bible says that when we ask in faith, and we believe God, God will respond. God responds. He asks nothing of you that he himself doesn't do. Simple as that. And if you know Jesus, praise God. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Get water baptized. We'll even baptize you if you don't have a church. If you have a local church, you need to be in church. Simple as that. Okay? It's fasting from churches done with. In the same manner, if you don't know Jesus, you need to give your life to him. The word of God says when you hear this anointed word, that God supernaturally puts faith on the tip of your tongue. And when you declare Jesus Christ as your Lord, repentance is in there. It has to be. And I'll explain that another time, except for that repentance means to turn away from sin and turn to God. That is real repentance. Amen. But he says here, he says that you when you declare Jesus Christ as your Lord, and you believe that God rose him from the dead on the third day, mm -hmm. the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. That seed drops into your spirit, and bang, you are born again. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall, shall be, saved. be saved. If you have prayed this prayer with me, I want you to call me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I've heard the word. I am responding to the word. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. And I turn away from sin, sickness, and disease. I turn away from, from sin that is going to hold me back. I, from depending upon the benefits of sickness and disease in my life that I have used as a crutch for too long. And God, I'm going to look to you for all provision. And in Jesus' name, be the Lord of my life. And let's start this journey together. In Jesus' mighty name, we want to thank you. Hallelujah. Give us a call. We're on YouTube, on Restoration Live. We are also on Facebook. In Jesus' name. See you next week.